Oh, I didn't see you there. Hello and welcome to yet another Outward Lake XP Reunions. Anywho, jokes aside, so far we have learned about the class and constructor for our vehicle API, which we will use in our main game mod to have vehicle re related functionality. Uh, the last time we created a constructor in which we created the vehicle, the vehicle itself was getting created in the constructor. And in our function, all we did was just create the object from our class and we let the constructor handle the rest as in creating the vehicle and assigning all of the values to our class members. By members, I mean class variables. And we added our data inside a list, the list of data type data. And today we will learn about function overloading or basically overloading in general. What we will do is we will overload our function for create vehicle to take in different sort of parameters instead of string vehicle name. What we will do is we will give it uint v hash. So instead of taking in a string, we will take the hash directly wherever it's getting called from. So let's get into it. Let me remove this comment. Okay, there we go. Now the parameters that I want to use for this function is the hash, which is in the data type of u int, vector three position, vector three rotation, color, color one, and color, color two. We will use this and invoke a different constructor, or we can use the same constructor, this one, but given different parameters for it. So let me create the object. All I have to do is create the object in our function because the constructor is doing the rest of the work. So this is how you try to minimize workload instead of doing the same code again and again. Code repetition. We store all of the stuff in one side and then try to mold it to have our way with the way. Uh, what? <laughs> so we mold it so that whatever parameters or whatever we want to do happens in one place. Sometimes I just forget how to English, you know? Excuse me for that. Anyway, let me create another constructor, but this time with different parameters. So, okay, I think I hit caps lock. Data, and instead of string vname, I'll just copy all the parameters from my function over here. Copy and paste. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to create the vehicle let me first just create the vehicle. Hold on. So vehicle v is equals to an API dot vehicle dot create vehicle. And the parameters for create vehicle is the hash. So we will use hash and then position. So position and then float rotation but we have vector three rotation. To convert from vector three to float, we just need the Z parameter of the vector three. So rotation dot Z, that is it. Then we have color one, but we have in the form of color data type, we need it in the form of int. So convert it from color to int, it's simple. Just take the variable color one dot to int 32. Then we have color two, same method dot two int 32. Okay, now to assign all of the variables. The thing is what I wanted to stress most about is do not do code repetition. That is very bad practice. Let's say if you like modify one part of the code and there's another copy of that code somewhere else and you forget to edit that part, you are going to have a lot of anomalies. So try to keep all of your code in one place if it is getting repeated. So what I'll do is over here, I have two constructor, which is basically doing the same thing. It is creating the vehicle and assigning the data. The only difference between these two is that data types are different. So what I'll do is I'll create another static function, which assigns the data because we'll be using this function in both our constructors, depending on the parameter. So I'll make a private, not a public. I don't want any like anyone to access this function from anywhere else, only from within this class. That is why private static, because 
well, I don't want any instance of this getting created. Only inside this class, one instance. And public, private, static, I don't want any return type, so void. And then I'll call this assign values. Now the parameters for this function, what I'm going to take is the object and all of the variables that we could generate from the constructor. So first I'll take the object and obviously the data type of the object is data. So data, mm, let's just call this data again. The next is the name of the vehicle. So string V name, then position. So vector three, oops, position. Wait, no, that's already used. So pause. What else do we have? We have rotation. So again, vector three. Do we need back to three? Let's just keep it back to three. Rotation. Oh wait, all the local variables should not have an underscore, so I'll remove that. The convention that I said again in the previous video was that if it is a class member, I like to keep the first letter of every word capital, as in camel casing. If it is a private data type, still a class member, I like to keep all of the letters small with an underscore before the word the identifier and if it is a local variable the little variable then the identifier all of the letters will be small and no underscore we have rotation now we need position i'll keep this as wait no i already have position uh color so color call one and color call two and over here we will actually assign our fit so i'll just cut this paste over here and I will call this function so assign values and inside wait return f of assign values inside we need all of these parameters from where can we get the parameters we already have that so chill out we will just pass this this is the object that is getting created right now so the object is getting passed in our function and it's getting stored in data next we need the name so from this constructor i already have the name which is getting stored in vname so i'll call vname what no vname then we have the position already have that then the vector tree rotation the problem is for this constructor we have a float so i'll convert this into a vector tree so new vector tree oops three the rotation the x and y needs to be zero the z is the rotation if you want to convert from float to vector tree this is how you do it next we have color but the data type is int you say and i need to convert it to color not not a problem new color and just inside pass the integer so color one and then new color for color two color two that's it so all of this is getting um uh, sorry all of the variables is getting passed inside this function it goes over here and then it'll store inside in this block of the code instead of copying and pasting in our different constructor both the constructor are doing different things sort of same but in a different way so i've made took all the code and put inside a sort of a block where we can assign use this in both the different constructors now you can see that this has errors because right now there's no scope for this it is a static function if it were a normal function for the object, then we could have used this, but no. What we are going to do is, this is basically the reference to the data. So we'll just copy data and paste this everywhere. There we go. Now, the name of the variables are wrong. We're gonna change that as well. Uh, vehicle data, we don't have that. I have to pass that one as well vehicle v and over here v oh not here here 
v done v name is done position the name is wrong pass rotation again wrong oh my god that is way too wrong there we go color one color two all vehicles my bad rotation color one and color two are already converted over here you can see it's in vector three and color so i don't have to again convert it i can simply just assign it same for color one bye bye and color two nighty night we still have a couple of errors over here we have v name and v the problem with this is that I misplaced both of the parameters. V should be in place of V name. So V and V name. And lastly, all vehicles. The thing that I did wrong in the last video was that I did not make this a static variable. This needs to be static so that we do not create any more instances of this variable. We just need only one. One list has all of the data inside of that list. I hope that makes sense. Just slow it down, rewind, and listen to it again. It's going to make, make sense eventually. Now, all of the errors are gone. We will call this function in our first constructor, which we have already done it. In our second constructor, where we are taking the hash, we're going to call this function again. So, assign values. The first thing that we need is the object. So, it's this. This is the object that is getting created. Then we have the vehicle, so it's V, we have created it over here. Then it's the name of the vehicle, so V dot display name. Then the position, we already have the position in the format of vector three, rotation as well, color, so we do not have to change our typecast. By typecast, I mean convert, a data type conversion, to anything at all. We'll just simply pass whatever we have gotten in the parameter for the constructor directly inside our function. So position, rotation, color one and color two. That is all. So now we have made two constructors for different parameters. One takes in string, the other instead takes in a uint. One takes in float rotation, the other takes in vector three rotation. So we can choose to either use this function or wait, I haven't created the object over here. How silly data temp is equals to new data over here we are going to instead of accessing this constructor we will access this constructor instead so all the parameters just go like copy and paste rehash position rotation color one color two see instead of throwing any errors it is actually calling this constructor which has a different parameter and this function is calling this constructor so basically this is how overloading works it's going to take time to get used to the fact of overloading so i suggest going through this video at least two to three times before you actually try and attempt uh, yourself so what did we learn today in a small format i'll just recap everything first thing we learned about overloading a function so we can have the same name of the function, but with different parameters. And then we learned about overloading a constructor. So the same name, again, the same name, well, it has to be of the same name because the constructor has the same name of the class, but again, different parameters. And then we learned about the bad uses of code repetition. You should not repeat your code. I cannot emphasize this anymore. So we use the function to call in both of our constructors so that we can keep all of the code in one place instead of repeating it in our both constructors. And lastly, the list should have been static because we do not need any more instances or copies of it whenever an object is getting created. Static means there is only one instance of it. No matter how many times you create an object from that class, static variables or functions will exist only one time. Yeah, that is about it for this video. All we did was emphasize about the um, overloading, overloading of everything. Hope this helps to understand your concept about overloading. It is a very useful thing. Trust me, you're going to 
use this. It's very handy. And well, lastly, documentation. Don't forget to document your code so that when you have an API <clears throat> and you use it in your main game mode and you use the function, you should have some sort of a faint idea that what this function does or what this variable actually does. So if you learned anything, hit that like button, subscribe for more Rage MP C Sharp tutorial. And yeah, don't forget to join our GitHub organization, which contains a lot of repositories for newcomers. It'll be handy for you guys. And join our Discord if you want to, if you want to chat or if you want to ask something about the API for GK Network, then you're free and welcome, welcomed in our server. Up until my next video, peace out.